Welcome to the SaaS Ad Lab podcast where we bring to you the stories of SaaS founders, entrepreneurs, and CEOs. My name is Luis. I'm the founder of Phantom Agency, a digital marketing agency specializing in scaling SaaS companies. And today I have the pleasure of interviewing Vences. He is one of the co-founders of Market Goo. So thank you so much for being on here today. I really appreciate you taking the time of your day uh, to be on here. And I know we had a little bit of issues like figuring out the times and everything with the time differences, but I'm really glad we were able to do it. Um, before I get into it, I would like to say that Vences was very kind to provide anyone that is watching or listening to a two free month off a year um, plan. So you get, you just pay for 10 months of the yearly plan, right? All you have to do is mention either SAS Ad Lab or Phantom Agency uh, whenever you're speaking to someone or on the intercom chat. And uh, other than that, let's get right into it. So Vences, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Where did you grow up um, and, and what, why are you here today? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Luis. It's, it's a pleasure to participate in the in the podcast. Well, I'm I'm from Spain. I'm actually in, in Madrid, in in Spain. I I started in the in the internet uh, quite early, and I had the chance to to work for a, for one of the starting hosting companies here in Spain. That company became very successful, and after and after an exit, I I got some uh, cash out from from that experience and, and with my actual co-founder we decided to start in the online marketing business that uh, that's what uh, bring me to is here as i said i'm living in madrid beautiful beautiful place to to live with my wife and my my kid that's great that's awesome and to just give a little bit more background is this the first company you started after that successful exit or are there other things that you kind of tried in the past as well well, I think that m most of the the careers, and I and I have my age uh, so far. You can you can have uh, different experiences. I, I have uh, two failures uh, yeah. until now, so this is uh, likely the the third uh, the third company that I that I launched so far. Right. Yeah. And uh, now, how how did you come up with the idea? Was was the was the previous company, uh, you know, where you were working at? Were they in the same space? Were they similar in, in the fact that they provided SEO to companies and stuff like that? Or is this something completely different that you kind of had an interest in and you decided to pursue it? <clears throat> I think that the, the, the connecting dots uh, concept uh, is really relevant in our, in our situation and our, in our experience because I started in this hosting company that it became really successful and I, and I was the, the, the second member of the company. And, and I saw interesting stuff there. I saw the, the helping the SMBs was nice. I saw recurring revenue when, when even SaaS was not a concept that uh, was developed. So subscription-based companies, uh, stuff was was nice. But I, for me, it was like, okay, hosting or servers, it was like kind of boring, boring <laughs> thing. So, so yeah, I, I was more into marketing. So I, I, I got my, my, one of my colleagues and I told him, okay, after this, this uh, operation, we have some cars. Why don't we try to set the same thing, but in the online, online space? And it was the times that, that online marketing, SEO, and, and, and Google Ads was uh, starting to, to grow. And so that was the initial idea, but um, we started with, um, not with a product uh, mindset, but with a service mindset, uh, with a packages and, and, and different stuff mm -hmm. and that was really hard to scale so at some point we we, we look at what we were doing and we started to making some technology to, uh, to automate what we were doing with the with the projects mm -hmm. and 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 as i said we had failure to to scale that company then we merged with another company that were trying to to get into the smb space so we learned a lot about uh getting there and, and having volume that second company didn't went well because it was very uh, um, sales people intensive and, and, and it was hard to uh, scale again so so we we stopped it ourselves and I said okay what we can do no? there, there was a there was a, a demand in the hosting space we knew how it works I mean hosting space like mm -hmm. companies like GoDaddy or Bluehost or HostGator at that time they were getting those SMBs there they were there they were getting the websites and so on and so I, I, I took at the market and I saw that there was no SEO solutions at that time. So I told my co-founder, okay, we have the core, we have the, the technology, we, we, we know the space, we know the, the, the hosting space. So we connect all the dots that was 2013 and, and we, we created like a, not an MVP, which is a, kind of a strange war in, in some situations. You cannot build 
a product that is an MVP when you want to sell through a through a channel like the one that we were pursuing. But we create like a like a primer primer project or product, and right. we get uh, this agreement with a hosting company. We saw there was a demand, so it was like connecting the dots, having these uh, failures, and learning from from those experiences. Not failures, not painful failures, but at least seeing that that was not what we wanted to do. We didn't want to we wanted to scale and, and have a different company design. So the the so the first deal came from doing an agreement with the hosting company then? Yes, it was like, okay, uh, this is the space, you know? so these hosting companies, they, as you know, and everybody knows, they, they have millions of SMBs. No? Within, right, the, right, because systems. they're already working with them, correct? Yeah, they're working with them. They're, they're giving them uh, domains, emails, and, 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 and websites. And, and then it was the time that when they, they, they went from, from websites or hosting to, to website building tools, and we say, okay, we are. We can do the next step. We can. We can be the SEO. We can be the, the online marketing. Every SMB uh, buying as a hosting or buying a WordPress hosting, they they are they, they would be interested in getting more traffic. Now, so mm-hmm. that was the point. But the I think that the interesting thing and the the unique thing in in our in that in those initial moments was that we we saw that we we didn't have money. We didn't want to to raise money uh, specifically. We want to have a like a kind of a company of our design, no, based on, right, the, right. on the on the past experience. So we we look at the market and, and we saw that uh, we couldn't go after every SMB, no. So it was like trying to choose the the, the channel, no. And and thankfully we were we had been in that channel, no. We had been in that business. So we 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 realized that in order to to get in, to get to the to the end user to the SMB and providing that with a, with a such solution, we should do some things not to create a platform that will uh, help these uh, hosting companies to to provide the service. So we uh, designed that initial platform and and we we pitch one hosting company, we make the test, and and we we keep working from there. In the world. So, so I know before, before we started the podcast, I, you know, we, we talked a little bit more about like some of the things that have that, you know, have been successful and stuff like that. And it looks like you have a bit of a different approach to actually selling the, the, the product. Um, and that is what you're speaking about right now, which is, you know, you have these resellers, which are the hosting companies, aside from the hosting companies, are there any other sort of resellers that you, that you're currently working with? Yeah, we, we're working with any type of SMB provider that at, at some point they, they needed uh, any kind of SEO, basic SEO, do-it-yourself SEO solution or, or, or data. So we're working with some SMB providers, Yellow Pages uh, type of companies. And also we integrate with some, uh, some platforms like website building tools or e-commerce uh, platforms. Um, so yes, those are the, the type of companies that, uh, that put mostly the 90% of our income. If you go directly to our website, you will see our offering, but that's uh, a tiny piece of what we are doing. And, and actually, it's not our focus. We, we have a website because uh, at the end of the day, when you work with these uh, wholesale companies or resellers, uh, you lose kind of the contact with the customer. So mm-hmm. at some point, we say, okay, let's go direct and, and try to understand a little bit more about our customers and, and then use that information uh, in order to, to improve our product. When the reseller is selling the product, is it still branded with Market Goo, or is is it something that you're kind of white labeling out and they're able to sell it with their name on it? Yeah, that's a great question. As I said, when we when we saw the opportunity, we we understood there were some requirements in this uh, in this reselling or in this uh, yeah in this reselling strategy, and some of the requirements is that you may have to provide white label solutions, you have to provide with an API for provisioning, you have to provide uh, support to the support teams because you're not doing the first level support, they're doing the first level support. You may help them with the billing, you may help them with the marketing, but yes, uh, at this moment, for example, we're working or Bluehost or Hostgator are companies that are reselling our solution under their brand, but we have other brands like dogone.com that are co-branding our our brand when they offer the solution to their customers. Okay, very cool. and. As far as so you have that as a, as a you know the main channel for growth and sales. Aside from that, is there any sort of efforts that you're putting into you know uh, marketing for yourself? Um, because you do have the website, you know that like if I wanted to sign up right now, I could do that and and just either sign up for the freemium or sign up for the pro plan. 
uh, which would allow me to use all the features. Um, is there anything that you're currently doing aside from obviously SEO to, you know, get people to join that way or is the primary focus on the resellers still? <clears throat> resellers are a big part of that, but uh, also we have some visibility on the market. And as I said, it was important for us to get some, some users. So um, we took a, a different approach, like the, the user approach of going after one and one of these, uh, of these companies and trying to convince them or to, to get them into the funnel. So we started looking at, uh, I mean, we, we are a small company. We, we are no, no more than, than 20 members. It's a remote first company. We are bootstrap. We are, we're doing really well now, but always we um, look for leverage instead of, uh, instead of power or instead of investing. So we look for leverage. No? So when, when we look at the acquisition strategies, we always look for leverage. No? Like for example, we have a, a nice uh, and, and quite successful partnership with Weebly. What we, what we do is we provide a solution inside their system and we, don't, we give them some kind of free tier to the user. So it's like a freemium within their, their app center. So, and then we, we engage with those users and, and, and convince them to, to buy the solution. That's one of the things that we do. We, we, we have also a kind of affiliate uh, network where other small companies, we call that referral partner network with other small companies that they, they cannot afford to integrate with us because it's costly or it's uh, time consuming for them. So what they say is, okay, I have these SMBs. They, they could be right. like a car dealer website uh, building solution. And they say, okay, I have these SMBs. They need SEO. They need a solution like you. Why don't you um, provide me with this, uh, with this solution? So what we tell them is, okay, you have this link and, and, and the only thing you have to do is to provide your users with this free solution. Mm-hmm. And if at some point they, they upgrade, we are going to provide you the, with attribution, with the right attribution and a, and a recurring based commission. There is a kind of sophisticated um, strategy to, to acquire customers. And right. also, lat- lastly, uh, two months ago, we decided to go for, for freemium on our website, which is something that we always wanted to do because we see that we are in a space that... Uh, um, SMBs or users, they, they are not aware of, uh, completely aware. They, 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 they have a strong opinion or a strong demand on that one SEO. They want more traffic, they want more success, mm-hmm. but they don't know what's going on. No? So we tell them, okay. Right. A lot of, a lot of the, a lot of the SMBs, specifically SMBs, like they're either not aware of what's out there, right? That like, they don't, they don't really know what to do. Um, so that, that's why something like this is very, very powerful because it allows them to kind of just plug in, you know, everything that they need, they get everything that they have to do, or some of the stuff might be automated. Um, so again, they, they don't necessarily know that a solution like that is out there. And then the other thing is that they either work with something like market goo, or they go through, through an agency, right. That is going to be like, I, I know what, what SEO, you know, packages look like from an agency and stuff like that. So I know they can be pretty steep, especially for like small businesses that aren't, you know, generating massive, massive income on a monthly basis. And then you get hit with this $5,000, you know, recurring, um, retainer for, for SEO and content and, and things like that. So it can be uh, pretty expensive. And when you look at it this way, Oh, well, now I have to pay $29 a month. Like it's a no brainer. Um, so that makes complete sense why someone would want to like, you know, choose something like this, especially if, if they're just starting out and they don't want to, you know, invest thousands of dollars into SEO. Yeah, that's it. And that reminds me that we didn't speak a little bit so about our USP. That's our USP. You know, we do, we are a SaaS that uh, does is a do-it-yourself SEO solution. Mm-hmm. We target SMBs. SMBs paying from 15 to, to $30 uh, uh, per month. And what they get is uh, they get a report. We, our technology scans their website. And after that, we uh, give them some competition information, some ranking information, and so on. But the most important thing is that in order to help an SMB, you don't have to, to fall in the, in the trap of a technical jargon. So what we do is we, we, we use a very easy and, and, and easy to follow language. Now it's like, I always say, it's like, this is like if you call your, your cousin or your friend who's an expert in SEO and you tell them, okay, please tell me um, what should I do? No? And they, right. with plain words, plain words. And, and every Friday, this guy, they, they call you and Okay, you know, you have to create, generate more content because you have not been general. You have to optimize this website or this page in, in particular, or there are, uh, your website is not loading fast enough. So, so use this. So 
uh, in, in our situation, um, the, the competition that we face or the, the landscape that we face was that there were like complicated tools like Mars.com or Sandbrass and mm -hmm. tools towards SEO professionals. And right, it was this, very this, Yes, the technical uh, towards pros, and then on the top of that, there were the agencies that they pay, they, they cost you a retainer, as you said, 500, 1,000, or so on. But what about those guys that they want to, they, they have their websites and they, they want to have their own control? No, they, there was nothing below that. So that's, that is the, 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 the positioning that we took. And obviously, we, uh, we mixed this with the, with the distribution design. To get to, to, to that uh, amount of customers today, we have more than more than one quarter million active customers using our tool on a daily wow. basis. Yes, yes, that's <laughs> uh, it's impressive. Yeah, maybe maybe one of what one we are one of the biggest SEO uh, platforms in the world yeah. without knowing it. But uh, yes, uh, with as I said, with a really a small team. You know? um, that's but awesome. obviously, yeah. But obviously, as I said, the, the distribution channel also. Uh, put some challenges on us now because we are they are always working on a very competitive space now so the pricing is not always 15 or, or 30 right, right. is sometimes it's a bundle service sometimes they, they offer it sometimes it's a tiny uh, subscription base or a yearly subscription base so it's uh is the way that uh, that we distribute our solution and then how they get the value uh, what is really unique you know, in, in our situation right yeah that makes sense and then they also have to get a, either a cut or you have to pay them you know some some sort of premium to to whoever's selling that for you um but i think that's awesome that's really that's that's really really cool um aside from you know growth and stuff like that as far as pricing goes how did you come up with the you know 20 29 dollars per month um pricing and and what was the reason behind the freemium when there wasn't one to start off with yeah um first of all we we in the space that we, our partners are they they are more price sensitive they are more aggressive on pricing obviously the, the, the solution has a different functionality so first of all one of the things that you have to learn when you work with a reselling channel or with a wholesale channel is that you cannot compete with them so we have to put a different a different pricing no? Um, we came to the 29 pricing after testing 19 dollars. Uh, I am a big believer that the price uh, qualifies you. It forces you to to increase the value, but it also attracts uh, a different type of, of yeah. customers. Mm -hmm. So with 29, we, I think we were in a in a in a midst of helping an SMB without hurting. We made some research and we saw some of the solutions that we were the stack of solutions that we were paying for, and and some of them were around that. So. So we start say, we start testing with that with that pricing uh, already, and and yes, uh, what about freemium? So so um, the thing is that uh, one of the the, the most successful um, strategies that we've been using to help our partners and also on our direct channel is is providing a free SEO report. Mm -hmm. Is the the kind of thing that you get into the website and you just put your your website URL and and then in, in a matter of seconds that you're gonna you get a, a glimpse of what you need to do, no? Right. So it was like we saw that people was coming to the website on a on a on a monthly basis because we only allow one 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 per month, and and they keep going and they keep coming. So we say, okay, let's let's do something about this, no? <clears throat> so let's let's create this report into a product. So let's productize this this report and give it away for free, uh, provide a decent solution, and then demonstrate the user that they, if they buy, if they upgrade, they will get more than that so the so the tiers are okay if you're not paying you will get uh, basic information of what's going on and if you pay you will get the the clue and how to you how you how to implement the the, the recommendations how the yeah. Right. yeah how to fix it right yeah you're right that's awesome and what 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 obviously right when that's part of the strategy to get more people to sign up so what kind of increase in signups have you seen after that was implemented, after the freemium was was executed, it's still too early. This morning uh, we had uh, this this uh, meeting to to review metrics, and we we saw some some metrics obviously, obviously that we have to actionate. Mm -hmm. The common sense was okay. It's still early, two months in in the right. row, but obviously we all of those. Um, 
of those guys coming into the website, running the, the report and leaving. Now they are in the loop and it's growing and, it's, and, the, and, the, right. and, the, and the volume is growing uh, every day. Um, I will say now that the challenge that we have uh, for, with all that information is uh, we have, to, we have to, to work on different studies. I research a lot about the freemium model because you can see a lot of, uh, a lot of opinions. No? Like, like people right. saying okay, right, right. it could be very harmful could be costly, you may be giving the wrong signal, you have to move the line whether you're providing value with the product or not. So we now have like three, three big chunks of, of things to, to, to keep improving. And, and we're gonna start with engagement. I mean, I think with a solution like, like the one that we have, we can do more, no? We were collecting data, we can, we can do more to provide uh, value to the user with engagement, sending them emails, showing them the value after the solution, so in them that they they have to they have to work. The the, the main challenge that we have with our solution is that uh, that we tell them what they need to do, but uh, in order to progress, in order to to extract value, they need to work on their own. So right. even though that we make it quite easy, we are we are about to launch a WordPress plugin that allows users to to leave fix it with a with a button. But they need to get into the tool. They need to check the recommendations, and they need to to do something. No? Mm -hmm. So, in in order to make, uh, in order to convince them, uh, I think we are going to start with the with engagement in order to to increase the the upgrade rates. No, mm -hmm. uh, an interesting point as well is that uh, what we see is that for some of these uh, for some of these users, just the basic information, the the free information that we provide them is valuable. So it's yeah. like, wow. Uh, they are not willing to pay because they have a lot of things to do and we provide them with a lot of value. You know? It's like, so what do you do? Do, we, do right. we skim it a little bit? Do we downgrade it? So we are in that situation now mm -hmm. and, and I can tell that uh, it's been a very nice uh, uh, project. Uh, we're learning a lot and uh, in, 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 in taking, let's see, what, let's see where it goes. But uh, mm -hmm. I think that Freemium the strategy, as I said, I, I did a lot of research. There were some some uh, concerns within the company, but yeah, there, there, there's definitely you know I I I've, I feel like I've heard it all too. Um, don't do freemium; it's going to ruin your business. Do freemium; it's 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 great. Like if you you know position it properly and make sure that you're giving away the the things that you should be giving away for free. Um, and so, so there's everything from like, don't do it to like, yes, total, totally do it. Um, but I think, I mean, obviously you, you have to actually try it to see whether or not it's going to be a, you know, a fit for you. Um, but I think when positioned properly and, and given the right amount of value, I think it's, there's definitely, um, you know, a, a place for it. And you definitely see that lift that you're looking for in actual sales. So, um, I, I think that, you know, with time you'll be able to, to, to really, see um the value that it's bringing and you you'll also be able to iterate on different things different features and stuff like that that will help you get to a point where it's actually a profitable you know action um or, or feature to have as on the platform yeah also interesting to see is um, <clears throat> i remember a, a time when we were in the agency and and we start we started doing a b testing things not for customers for for our clients and it was like this uh, when we were working with the small businesses and, and they have a limited budget. So we started with the A-B testing and, and the A-B testing was not conclusive because they, they, they didn't spend, so there was no traffic. So right, it was very low. Yeah, well, the, the data was, okay, we, we, it took us like six months to get a decent <laughs> data, no? So I think that, the, yeah, that's that, that what happened in the past. So, so I think that the, the good thing with the free minutes is that you open the door and then you start learning. So the, yeah. the, the sample is bigger, no? And then you get a lot more information and totally. what users are great. They, they, they give you information when they churn, they give you more information when they, how they interact. So I think it's not only seeing that you are going to create a nice business case. We, we have a long-term strategy in, in, in mind. So, mm -hmm. um, and this is important. We, the main focus of our company now is the, is the corporate culture. And, Sometimes we don't do things because we want to test this experiment and see how it goes. We do things because we want to, to learn as a group. We, w we want to create a high-performing team. Mm -hmm. And that high-performing team needs to do things like freemium and understand what's going on about this. And right. then with, with all these learnings, uh, we can build better products. Totally. 100%. And it's interesting you say that because you actually um, had a guest post that I 
just published on the website and it talks a little bit more about like essentially it's it's onboarding right so in, increasing engagement and things like that so it can go a couple of different ways but it talks about psychology and how to use it and i think something that you could really you know use to increase that that level of engagement inside of the actual application when when you said you know like they're getting everything that they need they're just not going in there as much as they should be to 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 make the fix and and you know use the platform as it should be used um and i don't know if you're using it obviously but like gamification is one of them where you get people to like use them based on like certain psychological cues that will get them to to want to use the product so there's definitely a lot of things that like and i'm a big fan of psychology you know with, with marketing and i think it's super important um so i always like to see things like that like come to fruition and 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 you see how you know all these different psychology books and everything like all you have to do is like read a little bit and and you have all these crazy ideas of what kind of things you can implement um, on your onboarding, on your marketing, and so on. It's a really interesting topic. We, um, <clears throat> we did some, uh, and I like the word, we, we did some motivational design, mm -hmm. uh, design uh, jobs in the past with, with, uh, with an external company, an external, uh, yeah, external company that helped us to, to design or to... Um, to let the user get the quick wins, to to get the recompense on or, or the or the yeah the the, the 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 benefit of working on something immediately, and then uh, for example, one of the things that we changed is that uh, we were giving like like a report that is looking at or audit in your website. Mm -hmm. So we tended to to make like this language. It was everything was bad. No, it was like okay, oh you are doing bad, you are doing really bad. These are the issues that you have on your website. So. Mm -hmm. These people came and they say, you know, from a psychological point of view, you are becoming the, the bad guy. You're, yeah, everything's you're, bad. <laughs> everything is bad. You're doing, yeah. you're, not, you're not creating a, a great situation. It's bad karma here, no? So, right. so we, change, we change the language and, and we start, okay, you, know, you can do better, no? And there are things, mm -hmm. still things to improve and, and all. And one of, the, one of the, look at this, one of the things that we did from a motivational design was that, um, when we checked the website and we saw that something was okay, instead of hiding it, which is like the typical UX uh, recommendation, okay, yeah. you hide it. What we did is we, we, we collected and we, we said, okay, uh, what you have done well? And we, we listed, no? And we listed like telling them, okay, these are things that you have to look at, but all of these things are already okay. So say, yeah, we take, we take the motivational design and psychology really serious. It would be yeah. very nice for me to, to go further. Onboarding is maybe a thing that we have to, to improve because I think there are a lot of uh, stuff uh, left to do on there. On the yeah, board. there's always things to switch up and, and things to test. And that's, that's the beauty of it, right? It's kind of like it never ends. And you just, I, I like the fact that you learn different things from it too. And, and again, going back to the psychological you know, aspect of it, like as humans, a lot of these things are subconscious so we don't even notice it. But when you're testing it, like you can, you can see how those things come to fruition and stuff like that. One of the things that was on the, on the post is, um, and I forgot the exact name of it, but essentially, you know, w when you go to, for example, let's say you go to Starbucks and you, you've gotten a, a little card that they stamp, um, you get, you know, 10, uh, you get, you know, you get nine and you get one free um, and the same thing, but on one of them, you got 10, but you already had two stamps, like they stamped two for you. So you already started. So you have more of a, you know, a, an incentive to go because you have less of the way to go, but it's still the same amount of times that you have to go. So, you know, things like that, that for, it could be like a bar on, on the platform that is kind of completed to make you want to finish it because as humans, we don't like to, to leave things uncompleted. So that's that, you know, that trigger that makes you want to go in and, and finish it because you already started. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is uh, this uh, the woman Kathy Kathy Sierra, uh, which uh, has a lecture and is a, is really interesting about software. No, and and there was one thing that struck me. Is she said uh, when you're when you're building a, a software product, you you cannot you have to be careful because uh, there are some solutions that are going to to make the to make your customers fat. And it was like, what? What do you mean? Yeah, they say. There are some solutions that uh, implies that the, the user has to, to spend more energy in, in order to get to, to, to the point of doing it, no? to the job to be done. No? And yeah. so they ended up eating more things because they need more energy to think and to act. <laughs> no? So 
that's also psychological uh, design no? in, into our solution. Totally. Yes, it's, a, it's an amazing topic. Yeah. Very, yeah, it's great. And it's one of my favorite things to talk about um, when it comes to, to just, you know, marketing overall. I think it's, it's great. And it's definitely something that most people, um, I think, overlook. So I, I like to bring it to attention whenever I see a, a good opportunity to do so. Um, so now let, I feel like we've gotten a pretty good grasp on Market View and, and you know, some of the things that you're doing and so on. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about yourself personally and, and you know, be vulnerable. Um, what is one of the things that you're, you don't think that you're very good at? Be vulnerable. It's uh, an amazing topic. <laughs> I, I, I am a good fan of Brenny Brown no? and the talk, talk about being vulnerable and I am not good at. Um, you know, there is a, a thing that um, my, my mentor recommended me, like implementing this, um, this EOS system, Entrepreneurial Operating System, which is a, a methodology and, and that you follow with uh, quarterlies and polls and, and, and a lot of uh, vision and traction. I mean, a lot of things, no? Mm -hmm. uh, interesting things and when I wrote and when I read the, the book then I realized suddenly I realized that in the book there is a there is like two two type of uh, they, they say okay successful companies that we have been looking into they they have like two type of, two types of uh, of management but those ones that are successful usually they have like two people in the company which is one is the visionary and the other one is the integrator mm -hmm. so the visionary is the one that is thinking about new ideas product relationships and culture and stuff like that but they are not good at uh, doing the, the, the serious it. stuff yeah implementing it following the pnl and so on so i was reading the book and i then then i realized oh my god then all my struggles no all my struggles trying to control it and to do the pnl and so on so i, I give a I, I bought another book to my to my to my to the person that i I was working more closely and I told them, okay, from now you're going to be my integrator because uh -huh. uh, I am really bad at following things or uh -huh. managing things or, or doing those, that on the professional side. Mm -hmm. On the personal side, there are too many to mention. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's mainly on the professional side, so no worries. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, yeah. to, to take it to the next, you know, to the, to the other side of things, what is something that you're very good at as a, as a, as a founder, as a co-founder? Uh, and a leader yeah i think that i have um a really sense uh, a really um, how is this instinct for people no? so um, i am really capable of sitting with somebody in the hiring process or, or know with somebody and and be very sensitive no feeling a, a lot of feeling i think that that's been a, one of the key things to to be where we are because uh, as i got keep some glimpses we have built a, a really interesting culture around the company. We have an open book management company. We do profit setting. We have like a long term, short terms like for the company, but we have like a vision, which is still not very clear. Yeah. But what we want, we want to be like 10 years from now, we want to be working together, all this small team, mm -hmm. earning a good, a good amount uh, amounts of money, but being very, have a lot of wisdom and so on. So we've been working on that, on that vision since day one. And along the time, I've been able to to express this vision to the people and 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 and, and hire the right way, hire the right people. And, and I think that's been uh, one. It's actually, as you said, psychology. It's actually human side of the business. Mm -hmm. I think that I am really good at that, and it's been amazing, an amazing story so far with that. Very cool. Yeah, it sounds like you've had a pretty successful run, you know, with with Market Goo and, and just being in the position that you are, it sounds like there's a lot of really cool things going on and happening. And, and the fact that you, you know, from, from, I know we haven't spoken for a ton of time or anything like that. Like I haven't known you for a while, but from, from what I can see, like, it looks like you're a very, you know, grounded individual and that you actually care, you know, about, about not just like, Oh, let's make all this money. Like you, you care about for one helping small businesses. And, and, and also, you know, like from what you just told me, it looks like you really want, everyone that is around you that is helping you grow your company to to also you know become a better individual whether that is you know at, at work or whether it's at home with their families and things like that which and i think that's really like the most valuable thing that you can take away you know um and it's it's definitely something nice to see because it, it, it's not you know it's not there every time but it's it's definitely uh, something that i appreciate seeing in people especially when i'm speaking with them one-to-one -one, which is pretty pretty cool to be honest 
Yeah, I think it, and, and sometimes we fall in the, in the idea that uh, building a, a kind of a caring uh, company is the opposite of uh, building a successful growing company. No? Mm -hmm. I can tell that we've been, we had this uh, slow SaaS ramp of death, no? uh, the, 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 this concept that you are growing really slow, slow, slow. There is no hockey stuff at all. No? But then you reach a point that you realize, and this is something that I wrote some time about, uh, some time ago. And you reach a point where you realize that your PNL and your income and your results are not the, the reflect of what you are. No? Yeah. You, be, you you start seeing that your that your the team members are very capable and they have these ideas and they start thinking about this. This is what we call one of the strong values that we have is wisdom growth. No. So at some point, I I, I told my team. You know, I have a faith. I, I see that the numbers are not coming, but I see we are doing and we are growing. We are understanding every every moment. We are increasing our methodology or hiring the right people or doing this and, and that and, and building the, the culture. And, and at some, then at suddenly at some point, it was like uh, one year ago, two years ago, then suddenly everything boom, collapses, not collapses, everything started going up. Mm -hmm. and it was like like the result of, of investing on, on the wisdom, no? yeah. not, not investing, not looking just at the, at the quantity numbers and the growth. So I can tell that you can build a quite successful company, very, very open, taking care of the people. Yeah, but you, you have to have a, a, a long term. That's why I, that's why I, by design, I, I told my co-founder, if we, if we go for VC money or I'm not again of that. I mean, I've been playing that game and it's, it's nice seeing some inside situations. Yeah. But if we go for that, they are going to, we're going to be pushed to, to grow, to grow faster. No, right. going, it's, it's de it definitely changes the culture. Yeah. You know, when you bring, when you bring, you know, outside forces, if you want to call them that, like investors and things like that, like they have their own reasoning. And, and most of the time, like the only thing they're, they're in it for is to, to, multiple like multiply their, their cash right so they, they want to get out of it successfully obviously um when people inside of the company uh, specifically the founders they that that's probably one of the goals as well obviously right as, as, as a as a business owner you want to grow your business and be successful monetarily and and obviously you know different ways but there's also different motivations that people have of, of why they do things whether it's you know, to help people, um, to help obviously your employees, like I said, like you can have monetary growth, but you can also have growth inside where, you know, you're providing a living for other people and, and they're able to then help, you know, their families live and things like that. So there's a lot of different ways to look at things. Um, so that's, yeah, that's, that's really cool. Yeah. And, and at the same time, you don't have to, you don't stop overlooking the, the numbers. No, we, we are growing really fast. We're going to digits uh, fast and still um, we are reinvesting, but still we, we, we have a great profit per employee. So right. that allow us to, to, to share that money and, and right. also to be more uh, anti-fragile. No, we are, we are more um, capable of, of evolving. No, we are in a complex uh, industry and at some point, we now we have some cash, and at some point we will be able to, to be more protected to pivot or to do something something else. So I think that it's a, a different kind of design. I'm not saying that you can apply this to, to any type of business or any venture, but at least uh, that there's, there's a, another recipe, and we're really para, proud of that. Uh, and it's been really an amazing. It's, we have a saying that uh, company, I mean, culture is more important than company in the sense that we're doing market good today. And market good is a brand and a solution in some space, but I think that this team, the, the way that we are growing the team and learning, will be uh, able to to do all other stuff in in, in, yeah. other, in other in other spaces. And that's awesome. That, yeah, that's behind the, the culture that we are growing. Very cool. And uh, if you if we're getting kind of closer to the to the time limit, so if you had one piece of advice uh, for other SaaS entrepreneurs, what would that be? Um, as, I, as I was saying initially, I think that the designing sometimes when I sometimes I, I get some some uh, some other entrepreneurs that come to us and they say, okay, you you have the, this amazing agreement with these companies and they we sell your solution. How do you do that? No, and and I, and I tell them um, I, I look at them and, and what I see is that they are really product focused. No, they are like, okay, I have the best product and the product is amazing and. and I can, I'm, I'm better than this one and the, the other one. No? And, mm -hmm. but, but sometimes, and, and I'm not saying always, no, but, but, right. but sometimes 
that is not the clue. The clue is to have a platform that is a platform or a, or a strategy to, to work in a distribution with a distributional strategy. You know? So what we did first, I mean, I am, I think that we, we had the first, we had the, the distribution market fit or whatever you can call that. I mean, we were able to provide, we sit with the, with our prospects and they, they tell us, do you have the API provisioning? Yes, we have. Do you have, you can, uh, do you have white label, multi-language? Do you do this? Do you do this? Do you do this? We tell them yes to all, no? But our solution, at our product at that time, it was, it was creepy. It was not that good, no? But it was like that the design that we, that we did for the distribution channel was, yeah. was okay. So my, my, based on my experience or based on our experience, I think that in some cases you have to, to think about uh, building the product or building the company uh, towards a distribution, uh, distribution model. Mm -hmm. And not focusing so much on on, on the products, which I I understand, no? it's like your baby, and you want to do the best yeah. product. But yeah. sometimes to get to the best product, you need to get the the right distribution channel. That makes a lot of sense, actually, because I've never, no one's ever put it that way. And you know, like they're they're focused on the product and the solution that they're providing. But I don't think a lot of people are thinking like, how am I actually going to sell this? Um, so that's actually, that's a great point. And I think that's, that's an, that's a very good advice, I think. <laughs> so definitely a good takeaway there. And, uh, aside from that, I have one more question. Um, and Vance, do you have any questions for me? What do you feel? Um, do you feel that the, the, the SaaS landscape is, is, uh, getting harder or is increasingly more competitive? Uh, do you still see, or where do you still see the opportunities for, for newcomers and, and for companies that want to launch uh, new ventures? Yeah, that's a great question. So that's something that I've been pondering about myself too. And I think like there's definitely, it's definitely getting you know more crowded as we go and it's just going to continue because it's, it, I think it's becoming easier to, to, you know, build a product and put it out there and stuff like that. But the thing is, you know, unless, unless I think the, the, the really the good answer here would be if it's innovating, then you, it's definitely going to be, you know, valuable and it's going to stand out and it's going to bring new solutions to the, to the market. But if you're just being repetitive with a different name, Right. When like, for example, let's say I did the exact same thing that market goo had, it would be a lot more difficult than it had had something that was in innovative um, in that same space. Right. So I could, I mean, I could, there's so many products coming out every single day. So it's really, you know, hard to say how saturated the market is. And I'm sure there's metrics out there. I'm just not, I'm not, I, I'm, I don't really keep an eye on them, I guess. Um, but I mean, it's definitely, it's, it, I think it's definitely getting harder if you are not thinking about innovation, right? So yeah, it's like, like if you see, yeah, this idea struck me because I, I saw this, uh, Martech, have you seen the Martech, uh, it's like, uh, they, they track all the tools by categories. Yeah, I did see that. I did see that. So, so initially, if you, if you look like five years ago, it was like, like this size, no? And uh -huh. now it's like this size. So right. there's a lot of companies competing in, in, in the same category. Right. Right? And, and the thing is, you know, and that's another way to look at it because you have like the different tiers of each one of them. If, if I'm thinking of the exact same thing that you're talking about, mm -hmm. like you had the, the ones that are for like, you know, they're not so sophisticated or anything like that and they're cheaper. So like more people can, can you know, um, they can get those. Uh, and then you have the next tier and then you have the next tier, which is like your enterprise level. So th that's another way to look at it. I think if you're going to consumers, it might be easier um, to get in because you have a lot bigger market. Now, if you go on an enterprise and you're providing the same solution, they probably already have a provider. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting topic as well. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of different things to talk about. Uh, <laughs> but Wences, thank you so much for being on here today. It was a pleasure having you and, and, and definitely enjoyed, you know, the time that you, that you spent on here speaking about a lot of different things about market goo about yourself. And, uh, I just wanted to, to again, say thank you for being on here and where can people find you online? Yeah. They can find us on marketgoo.com. It's quite easy. Okay. Yeah. And don't forget about the, the deal that Vences was very kind to provide two months off a yearly plan. Uh, just make sure you mention SAS ad lab or phantom agency. 
And uh, it's always great to be on here with great entrepreneurs and founders and learning about, you know, their stories and everything that they've been able to, to grow uh, from scratch and, and really seeing the progress and, and, and everything that it takes to get to, to that next level. And uh, thank you everyone for listening. I really appreciate everyone's time. And if you like it, subscribe, share it, give it a thumbs up wherever you're listening or watching. Um, and thank you so much. And we'll see you next time. Thank you, Luis. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Take care.